suffering and fear is can definitely and I will create someone that is you know that can go into the world with a very strong personality and a win personality because they don't want to experience that again on this episode of a call to leadership we close out this series on entrepreneurship if you haven't listened to the first two episodes go back and listen to those because they're so high value and impactful this third episode we close with the real world challenge of self care i can't wait for you to listen in i'm dr nate sala and this is a call to leadership I wonder where you find or the value of self-care in this equation. And I'm not just talking about physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally. How important is that? And where has it fallen off? And how have you gotten back on track? Because I think people want to know that. Is it essential? I I think self-care is essential. I think that, you know, you, you have to take care of yourself to be able to take care of other people, right? If you don't put your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual well-being first, you can't be the person that the rest of the people in your life need you to be, right? I mean, I just think that that's what it is. So for me, that's going to the gym, right? Whether that's at four or five, six o'clock in the morning, if it's at, you know, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night, if it's somewhere in between, I'm going to give myself 60 minutes, right? Phone turned off, music turned up. I'm going to be in my own head and I'm just going to look for that clarity, right? Like what's going on? That is my time, right? I give 23 hours out of my day to, to everybody else in my life, right? But I have one hour that I protect and I fight for and and I kick and scream and I'm going to get my one hour no matter when it is because I need that for myself to be the man that my company needs, that my family needs, that my friends need. I have to have that. And so for me, it's working out that anybody else can do whatever you want. But I say absolutely, you have to figure out what it is to hit that reset button every single day to be able to give 100% of yourself the other 23 hours of the day. And it probably gives you some comfort knowing that is coming, right? Absolutely. Like I know, no matter how bad it is, I have an hour to where I can just literally shut the world off and just, just get back to myself. It's a reward. It's a reward. It's great, man, to look at, you know, I think that, I bet you would say that to, I know about three right now that I'd say that to, hey, have an hour for yourself that doesn't involve your business, your family. They would know what they do. What's like, the alternative? Be, I know, and I'll be honest with you. And that's what's- Burning like, out? Like, I know what it is for me. You know, we're a lot alike in that manner. But like, you know, for me, it's on the ice, being on the ice, even being on ice with my son, you know? But I think that that gets overlooked so much because you have to dedicate so much to be successful. How can you think about an hour or two a day for yourself? That is like, that's how I know why. Cause I know it's interesting. Cause we all, we've been through it. We know what it's like to just be absorbed by your business and not eating right. You know, not working out, not, you know, just having zero you time or, I mean, it, 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 you know, it runs its toll on you. I think self-care is, is essential. You know, owning your, you know, maybe not, like you said, an hour a day where it could be meditating, it could be working out, it could be gardening, whatever, gardening, gardening. Like, yeah. whatever, whatever it is that, whatever it is that you do. But the but protection factor, I, I think that's, that, I the, fight for it. Yeah. You know, and, and some, and sometimes, right, I, I sacrifice sleep, <laughs> right? <laughs> I sacrifice things for that hour because it's so important, you know? And, and that's, that's my time. Like, that's all I get. So if you think about it, I get 365 hours a year to myself, right? Like, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Like, that's not a lot, you know? Like, so when you start giving in on that or you're like, oh, I'm too tired. Uh, oh, I, I need to, I need to do X. You can always put an excuse there. Right. But I think, I think in life, right. For me, yeah. 
you know, eating healthy, taking vitamins. You know, it's like it's like Hulk Hogan back in the eighties, right? I grew up with Hulk Hogan's. Like eat eat your vitamins. You know what I mean? Like there there's a certain there's a certain you know purpose to that, right? Like if you don't take care of your body, your mind, your mental state, your 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 how how can you give your company your all? How can you give your 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 family your all? I mean, as an entrepreneur, you're pulled in 15 different directions every single day, right? Um, a lot of times people are like, what do you do? And, and as a joke, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I put out fires, right? Because it's constantly one problem to another problem to another problem. And you're, you're, you're doing all this stuff. You're relying on your mind and your body to get you there. You know, like you've got to be sharp. You've got to be on point. You've got to be ready to go. And for me, that comes from structured lifestyle, right? Grounding myself in the gym, making sure that I, you know, try to eat as healthy as I possibly can because my body has to last, right? Like there's no point in putting all this time and effort into building a company. And at 50 years old, you die of a massive heart attack. Like you haven't hit the payout yet. 100%. You know what right. I mean? Like wow. you haven't hit the payout That's yet. That's a good perspective. Yeah. You know, so you've, you've done all this stuff. You, you've made some money. You've done everything. I'm 42. I don't want to die in eight years. You know what I mean? Like I, I don't work this hard to then just, you know, be like, oh, well, he worked hard, you know, like great. You know, and it, so, it happens every day. Happens every day. It does. I just got off the phone recently with a colleague who had been working for 30 years and shared news about cancer. He's like, man, I got this diagnosis for cancer. I'm like, I've been putting in all this work all these years and now I'm just going to die. And he ended up retiring. And fortunately, uh, thank God it was, it was treatable, but it hit me and I get off the phone. I'm like, you know, dude. Right. Right. Who wants to go out like that? Reset. It's a re- it makes you it, reevaluate. It makes things. you reevaluate. And that's that self-care piece. And putting it in perspective. And another thing that's important about that, Ronald Heifetz in, uh, in his book on adaptive leadership, he talked about this practice for leaders to get on the balcony. And getting on the balcony is above all the minutia, right? And this time that you protect, it's a bit of that. It's a bit of getting on the balcony, getting away like you said, I mean, clarity is, it's, it's power, right? It's, it's, it's power. And so oftentimes when we're stressed out, myself particularly, if I go spend that hour in releasing those endorphins, getting that dopamine hit from a good workout or whatever it is that, that helps you make clear choices, the problems I had an hour and a half before right. are not nearly as stressful as they are leaving that environment. And it's, they're the same problems but I've got a different perspective and that self-care helps me. Like you said, hit reset, reframe the perspective, but we will sacrifice that first in general over something, some other pressing issue. And we have to have the discernment and discipline to say, no, I have to, this is, this is a non-negotiable. How difficult can that be? It's extremely difficult. And that's why you've got to be prepared to go, it, you know, it's not like, Hey, it's four o'clock. I'm going to the gym. Right. Like it's, it's for me, right. It's, it's, I'm going to get that hour. I have 24 hours in a day. I'm going to take one for myself. And I don't know when that one hour may come. And there are days when, you know, it's a much better time than other days, but you know, there have been times where I've, you know, landed from, you know, a flight. I've been gone for three days. I come home, put the kids to bed. I go to the gym. And people are like, you're crazy. I'm like, no, I'm not. This is, this is, this is my reward, right? This is, this is what I need to function to be my best. If we, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, if you could figure out one thing that you could do every single day for your company that made your company a little bit better every single day, you would do it. You would do it. A hundred percent. You would do it, right? Mm, but the yeah. first thing that entrepreneurs do is they give up their health. And it's like, wh why are you doing that? Like you, you have to be at the top of your game every day. You owe it to your customers. You owe it to your, your employers, your employees. You owe it to the people that, that depend on you. You owe your best every single day. And you need to figure out what it is you need to do every single day to make sure that you're at the top of your game. And if that's taking one hour and you go, I mean, look, I don't know if you guys ever follow like the rock right on, on Instagram or anything like that. That dude is busier than anybody I've ever met. You know what I mean? Like you just see, I mean, he's flying all over the place. He's got all these movies. He's got, you know, a tequila company that just sold for billions of dollars. I mean, he's doing it, right? 
he's he's in the gym at 11 o'clock at night, four o'clock in the morning, whatever it is, because that's his thing. And I'm not saying you have to choose the gym, but figure out what it is, what's your thing? What do you enjoy to do? Like you said, maybe running, maybe yoga, maybe it's reading a book, gardening, whatever, right? But do it, make it consistent and fight for it. Because if you're not at the top of your game, you can't be the best businessman that you want to be. You can't have the best business that you want to be because you are not physically where you need to be to make those decisions. It's good stuff. But the, the, but that's not all because the kids, right? You mentioned the kids. You mentioned the struggle. And I'd love to close with this idea of legacy building. As entrepreneurs, we've had to struggle. And part of the challenge when you build businesses and eventually you become successful is your kids don't have to struggle. And you want to give them more opportunity, but you also want to build their character. And there's a disparage often between how can I build their character without the kind of struggles that I faced, right? Of course, you don't want them to go hungry. Of course, you don't want them to have to, to, to have those traumatic issues in childhood that you may have had. But how do you build them into a warrior? I can tell you what it works. You know, what I think I'm doing, you know, is you obviously can't take. So you give them the house, you give them the, 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 the better things, you know, they're, they're able to, to do things, you know, so you're, you're creating that, you know, a more soft life and more of a comfort based life. Right. Cause that's what we want to do as parents. I think sports are a great avenue. Sports, you know, give you the struggle, the suffering, the, the mental toughness, you know, and then you can apply that, you know, while they're suffering and struggling and want to give up, and then you can take those life lessons and apply it in like a sports setting for me, you know, and, and my son, you know, like when he is so tired, he can't lift his legs and he wants to quit or, you know, he, he has a drill that's just too hard for him to do. And it's, and he's, it's really, you know, he likes to shy away from it. And it's like, no, it's the, it's the drills that are the hardest that you hate the most that you get the most, you know, growth out of. And then he's like, Oh, that makes sense. And then he would do them. You know what I mean? So for me, you know, that is something that I felt like has been a, a great tool in his development of, um, you know, I mean, as a cross country runner, Lath plays hockey, you know, there's, this is, this is, you know, difficult on your body. You have to have mental toughness. You know, you are an athlete, you're an, you know, you're an athlete. I think that sports can, can help with that. They, they can. Yeah. I mean, look, growing up basketball, baseball, football, soccer, all that. I thought, you know, my son would love to do that, but turns out I introduced him to those and he didn't. It was cool, but and I didn't want to press him to do something that was not in his genius zone. So we began to explore other things. It turns out my kid is a total gamer computer dude. I mean, he is all over it and in that world. And so having that same type of mindset to develop his skills and give him challenges in that world has been how I've begun to try to develop his struggle muscles and encourage him and allow him to fail. You know, he's got these few little businesses that he's launched and, you know, he said, dad, I know I'm going to be successful because you're a successful entrepreneur. I'm like, no, nope, there's no, there's no guarantee. You got to just keep punching it out, keep pounding it out. Failure is not final. It's feedback. And you will eventually reach where you want to go, but you have to know that there's going to be roadblocks along the way. I'm not going to, and uh, here's another thing I'm, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to catch you. I'm not going to catch you because when you fall, of course, you're not going to fall so hard that you can't get back up. But when you fall and you get back up, those war wounds, that's what's going to push you through when I'm not here. That's what's going to help you when dad's gone because I won't always be here. And sure enough, it's happened. He licked his wounds from his last video game he was building. And I haven't told you guys this. And just recently, about a few weeks ago, came back up to me and he's like, dad, I'm ready to give this another shot. Like, okay, we're going to go to dot two now. Dot two is you're going to create a business plan because you're 14 and a half now and you can do that. All right, where do I go? Got an app. He created his own business plan, vision, mission, values, ops, HR, finance, everything. And then he proposed and it wasn't 600 bucks this time that he wanted dad to invest on family shark tank. It was $2,000. He's like, dad, I know I, I just, I ran out of money. 
these developers were more expensive. Everything was taken more. I need to up the ante. It's like, okay, where's it going to go? 600 for this, 300 for that, 450 for that. All right, where's your developers? I got them on Fiverr this time, not my friends that were doing, you know, I mean, the kid is learning. And let me tell you, without those wounds, without that struggle, it wouldn't be where he is today. Yeah, this is this is something. I mean, I've, we've we've talked about it amongst ourselves, right? This is. I mean, my kids are are just now five, just starting sports. But this is as a as a father, right? Like, this is the biggest issue that I face because I think a lot of what I was able to become was based on what I went through, right? Like those hard experiences, young obviously sports, you know, traumatic injuries, stuff like that. Right. And so understanding how to light that fire or get that fire started inside of a child without putting them through something traumatic is something that I struggle with. Right. And so as we continue to, you know, carry this, this conversation forward, I'll share, you know, the things that I, that I'm doing with them that I'm, I'm reading about and, and trying to, you know, instill in them, a sense of money, right? What is, what is money? Like you want to buy these things, right? But what does that come from? You know? And so my kids are understanding, right? Like when, when mommy and daddy have to, when we can't go play because we've got to work, that's because we're trying to make money and that's what you have to do in order to buy stuff, you know? And so we're at, we're at that stage now, but yeah, no, this is a struggle for me because you know, my, my life is 180 degrees different childhood is 180 degrees different than what my kids are, mm -hmm. you know, and, and how do you, how do you instill for me, right? Fear is a huge motivator. How do you instill a, a, a fear of loss without having loss, right? Like, how do you comprehend that? Like, how do you, how do right. you, you know, put that into a feeling into your mind to say, okay, if I don't do X, Y is going to happen, right? Without severe consequences. And so I'll be very open and transparent with everybody, right? Like this is something that, that has haunted me for the past five years, right? Like I don't, I don't want douchebag kids. You know, I say that all the time. Like I don't want kids who are just entitled. I want them to be able to, to understand work ethic and, and hard work and, and, and everything isn't just given to you, even though you live in a nice house and you have a lot of stuff. Yeah. I think you can do it. I think, I think he doesn't have to suffer to have that. I think it's easy for us to put, our experience and say, Oh, well, you know, we suffered, we lost that created this, but you know, people can be in kids inspired and motivated differently than others. Right. So that could be like with my son and my daughter, you know, working for me at a young age, earning, you know, coming under employment and working and seeing, you know, how, what it is to have to work an honest day's work and, you know, find what really motivates them and maybe it's money at some point, maybe it's having the money to buy things and shoes and those things that they want. But then you, as opposed to giving it to them, maybe they're, maybe they're buying it and they're purchasing, they're working for it. So I don't feel like, I feel like suffering and fear is can definitely, and I will create someone that is, you know, that can go into the world with a very strong personality and a win personality because they don't want to experience that again. But I think, I think you can deliver what, you know, your goal and what you want for the kids uh, in a way that's, that's with them not suffering and not really going without certain things. Right. So I, I and, and, and maybe yeah. it's not even, you know, sometimes it's not necessarily suffering, but it can, it's tension. And we can create healthy tensions because even when you're working out at the gym, right, you need tension to grow yeah, and to create the right kinds of tension in their lives that ultimately will lead to growth. And I mean, there's a saying, and I don't know if I really truly buy into this saying wholeheartedly, but I heard it not too long ago that poor people teach their kids to be poor people. And I thought, is that, you know, there maybe there's some truth to that in some cases. But then I look back, okay, well, my mom never really, you know, she was, she never really got out of poverty in her own right. I mean, in some, you know, barely. But then she had three kids who were achievers and who were successful by their own rights. 
And I wonder, I was like, okay, what's the difference? And I think you hit it right on the head, Travis. Uh, there was never an idea of entitlement. It was always hand up, not a handout. And I think that's part of the equation when we're teaching our kids, giving them the kind of opportunities is that we're teaching them that you've got to develop the skills. You've got to create a better future state. Don't wait for anyone else to do it for you. Because if you wait, you'll be waiting your whole entire life. And I think that's part of how we engage them to reach further than we could ever reach, right? And then create these generational legacies that perpetuate that same mindset. And I think there's a beauty in that. It makes, uh, it makes the journey all that more exciting. Yeah, I, th I think if you struggled or like that to your statement, you said poor people raise poor people. I think it's because maybe the, the, the goal is to not be poor and just the, anything that's not poor is, is a win because generations before you that's got by, I call it the get, you know, you're getting by meant Oh, you know what? I mean, I've heard this said, you know, as long as you pay your bills and you know, you, you got food on the table, all is well, all is well, Travis. So, so to me, to me, to me, that's, you know, Land Rovers that you get paid for that way. No. And you know what? I, I think there's a level of, you know, there's, there's some, there's something to be said for that, to be thankful that you, you're, you're appreciating what you have, but to not push that to like the next level, mm -hmm. you know, is like foreign to me as a personally, like I've had that said to me before. We've talked about this and I have the complete, like my gut is just like, that's no, not the way I think. Like, that's not like, that's not okay. I don't want my son to be, uh, I might tell my son, you know what, as long as you give, you know, some effort, you know, and whatever happens, happens, you know, that's all that matters. You know, that's what kind of, what kind of example am I setting? No, you know, for him and, and, and appreciation you know? and progress are not mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. They actually work best in tandem. Mm -hmm. Like I wake up every morning with affirmations, appreciate, appreciate, appreciate gratitude, and then progress. And that works really well together. Yeah. That's important. Hey guys, I think we got personal. Yeah. This was so good. Too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Love having you guys on the show. Uh, we're going to keep this going. Would you guys, we're just going to keep moving forward and just sharing more and more about the entrepreneurial life. And I know someone listening today has been impacted in a good way. I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Thanks for it. coming. Thanks Love you guys. Love Thanks for you. having us.